two weeks now after Hurricane Sandy, anger is building in places that have been in the dark since the storm. Reporter Erica Ferrari has the latest now from Far Rockaway, New York. We put in 12 packs of pampers in a bag. Volunteers like Sophia K. Franklin and her daughter fanned out across the city to assist people who are still struggling. They lost a lot of their stuff. They lost their homes. We're right next to the beach. The beach and the bay, they met each other. And they had a dance, and some of us didn't make it through the dance, so we're here to give them what they need. Here in Far Rockaway, volunteers are working to distribute those essentials like blankets, water, and diapers. All of these supplies have been donated. But some say help came too late. This has only been maybe a week and a half of, you know, fresh water stuff. But for the first five to six days, no one was down in the Rockaways. Frustration is especially high on Long Island. Life needs to change their ways. Where some of the 130,000 still without power are demanding answers from the Long Island Power Authority. It's just absurd. It's like going on and on and on. End it. The power company says it hopes to have electricity restored by late Tuesday. In Far Rockaway, New York, Erica Ferrari for CBS 3 Eyewitness News. When you look at the breakdown in terms of numbers, our recovery cost is about $32 billion. Uh, originally, we had estimated it to be about 30, so it's right about where we thought it would be. A prevention and mitigation package of about $9 billion for a total recovery of $41 billion. Hurricane Katrina got a lot of notoriety for the way government handled or mishandled, depending on your point of view, the situation. But when you look at the damage done, the economic damage, the housing damage, the damage to commercial properties, because of the density of New York, the number of people affected, the number of properties affected, was much larger in Hurricane Sandy than in Hurricane Katrina. Man returns to Jersey Shore to find home missing, by Mike Crumboltz, Yahoo! News the lookout 15 hours ago. Before Superstorm Sandy hit the New Jersey shore, Ortley Beach resident Nick Maria left for safer ground. When he returned, he found that his summer home wasn't damaged. Rather, it was completely missing. It was as if David Copperfield had pulled a fast one. If only. Perplexed, Maria called his township, which proved to be no help. The township didn't know what happened, he told my Fox Nye on Wednesday. He then called the office of the governor. An assistant asked if he was sure his house was gone. Maria replied, Miss, you misplace your pen and your pencil. You don't misplace your house. Photos Sandy Road to Recovery. Maria then asked my Fox Nye to help him. The station reached out to the New Jersey Department of Transportation and was told, the structure in question was pushed off its foundation and jammed against another house that had come to rest in the middle of the street. The two houses had sandwiched the utility pole. Our crews did not take down any structure unless it was deemed to be unsafe. The DOT said the home had shifted off its foundation and had been blown into the middle of the road, a contention that Maria disagrees with. He has a post-storm photograph taken by a neighbor that shows his home far from the street, and he has hired a lawyer. Photos Sandy from above. The loss of his home has been understandably tough on Maria and his wife. Not only was his house completely destroyed, but all their belongings were too. Maria was especially upset that he never received a phone call letting him know that his home was about to be demolished. The DOT told my Fox 9 that reaching out to homeowners would have caused a delay when time was of the essence. Maria summed it up like this worse than bizarre. It's very sad. Very disheartening.